You are with David House of Saving Health Ministries, and in Matthew 24, Jesus gave specific warning to the disciples concerning events before the second coming of Christ. And in Matthew 24 and verse 4, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. This was a warning that Jesus gave. But in order to recognize deception, one must be anointed with the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not have spiritual discernment to see nor recognize spiritually the apostasy by men that are professing to follow Jesus Christ. And any man is capable of making a mistake. Therefore, we need to anoint ourselves with the word of God and the spirit of God that we may be able to see spiritually the sins and the wiles of Satan in these last days. So before we open up the word of God, let us begin with a word of prayer. Loving Father, please be with your children. Help us to be converted to Jesus and not to men. Lord, we intercede on behalf of Andrew Enriquez and those with him there at Prophesy Again, Save to Serve. May you open their eyes to the truth of your word. Please save your children, save your people that are in apostasy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Notice what Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 16, verse 11 and 12. Please pay attention. It says, how is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Jesus said to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were the church leaders. What is this leaven he's speaking of? What is this leaven that Jesus was referring to? Notice verse 12, it says, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus said to beware of the doctrine of the church leaders. And we see now Andrew Enriquez is leading individuals to violate the word of God. Notice in this clip that we're going to play for you how Enriquez makes mention that our only safety is in Jesus Christ, which I agree with that statement, but then he contradicts that statement by saying we have to protect ourselves. Notice this short clip. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And your only safety is in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we're living in a time, by the way, men, Raise your hand. All the men, raise your hand. Raise your hand, men. All right. Thank you. Hands down. We're living in a time when God has stated he's our mighty fortress. He is our bulwark. Men, husbands, fathers, we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect our family. Now, these statements are being made in response to what took place in Haiti when the four SDA members were taken captive by the armed gunmen who came into the church service in the midst of their live stream and took them captive. That's where the context of these statements are coming from. And understand that I agree with him when he says that we should be vigilant and alert concerning our surroundings. Absolutely. We should be very much aware as to what is happening where we are, no matter where we are, whether at the grocery store or whether sitting in church. We should be very much alert to what is taking place. But the contradiction by first stating our only safety is in Jesus. Again, I agree with that statement, but then he turns around and says, we have to protect ourselves. Well, what does he mean by protect ourselves? Are Christians to have guns and arm themselves with firearms? Is that what he means? Well, let's see what Ellen White states concerning this. But before we see what Ellen White states, I want to allow him to explain himself. So listen, as we go to our second clip, 
of what he has to say in response to protecting ourselves. If someone were to walk inside right now, inside this, this building right here, and attempt to cause chaos, what would you do? Run under your chair and cower in trepidation? What would you do? We have to be vigilant as men. And what we see happening in Haiti is not an aberration. It's going on elsewhere around the world. And let me be very candid right now. We are to have common sense protection. Right now. Now when the Sunder Law is enforced and we are being persecuted for not adhering to Sunder worship, when it becomes the law of the land, then we do not find security in common sense protection. We leave that with the Lord. As Christ said, do you not think I can pray the Father? And he will send 12 legions of angels. Put up thy sword. That's the time of crisis. But before that point, someone comes knocking on your door. You are not, you are simply a random target. Comes knocking on your door. Are you going to open that door and say, come on in? And take all of God's possessions. You can harm my wife, harm my children. And you go in one corner and simply pray. While I'm praying, I'm going to lay hands on you. Look what's happening and tell them to try it here at Safe to Serve and see what happens. By God's grace. Is this the spirit of Christ? To say, to tell others to come and try that here at Safe to Serve? Is that the spirit of Christ? Or is that the image of the beast? Brothers and sisters, obviously, no one with common sense will open their door and allow robbers and thieves into their home to harm their family. No one's going to do that in their right mind. But understand, to say that you need common sense protection before the Sunday law, but when the Sunday law comes, you can put aside your common sense protection, is to say you need to have a gun. That's what he's inadvertently saying without saying it, which showing he is a coward. He did not boldly say it because Christ is not in him to say that. Christ would not say you need to have common sense protection. Christ would not say we need to protect ourselves because Christ put his whole life in God's hands. And if we are walking by faith, we are to put our whole life in God's hands, which is the true experience of righteousness by faith. Are we walking by faith or are we walking according to our own works? That's the question. And Andrew Enriquez is advocating for you to arm yourself before the mark of the beast, which is apostasy from the truth. Notice what Ellen White stated concerning this. And in these two statements, she is actually speaking to her son who had a problem with wanting guns. Notice here it says, you know, Edson, again, that's Edson White, her son. I talked with you in regard to guns and firearms and cautioned you to restrain yourself on these points, lest you should obtain a passion to possess such things which are dangerous. So clearly she was rebuking her son for desiring to have guns and firearms. Notice the second statement from Ellen White. Again, referring to her son, Edson White, it says, But Edson, your own course, my poor boy, has led them to suspicion you, and they may have done so in instances when you were not guilty. But when they see you going directly against that which they know to be our express wishes, see you secretly making trades, borrowing firearms, and concealing it carefully from us, can you, my dear boy, wonder that they lack confidence in you as an obedient, faithful, truthful boy? Again, she's rebuking her son for borrowing firearms in this second statement, showing again that she was against the possessing of firearms. And if we are truly putting our whole faith in Christ, we will not need firearms, but we will believe the scripture that says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The who? The angel of the Lord will protect you. 
not having a pistol, not having a gun, not having a firearm, but having your faith in the word of God, in the angels, in the guardian angels that are commissioned to protect God's children. I've heard countless stories of Christians who have been in the midst of danger of those who had guns and God didn't allow one bullet to strike them, though they were fired at. Or when men came to rob them, God had angels in the form of soldiers appear around their house and protect them. Brothers and sisters, we don't need guns. We need faith. And Andrew Enriquez is showing a lack of faith in the word of God. The Bible says in Psalms 100 and verse 5 that his truth endureth unto all generations. In other words, the truth doesn't change. Whether it's the Sunday law time frame or before the Sunday law, the truth never changes. So for him to say we need to protect ourselves and have common sense protection before the Sunday law is apostasy. And it is a subtle deception of Satan and not of Christ for him to say such. This is heresy that Andrew Enriquez is teaching. So understand, he is leading you to trust in your works rather than have faith in Jesus Christ. But it's subtle the way he's presenting it because he's saying one thing. Hey, our only safety is in Jesus Christ. But then he's saying another thing. We need to protect ourselves and have common sense protection. You're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. And the Bible says that a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. This brother is an apostasy and we need to intercede for him and we need to separate ourselves from him because he is teaching heresy. Notice what the Bible says, how Andrew Enriquez contradicts the word of God. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three and four. Again, notice what the Bible says. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three and four. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So again, though we're walking in flesh, we are not to war after the flesh, meaning we don't need swords. We don't need knives. We don't need guns and firearms, but we need to arm ourselves with the word of God and have faith in Christ and put our whole life in Christ's hands. Notice what it says in verse four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, the weapons that we need are not of this earth. That's what the Bible is telling us. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are the word of God and prayer is our trust and our faith in Christ, not in guns and firearms. Notice here the next clip of what he says. This is our third clip from his presentation on Sabbath, April the 3rd, 2021. And he makes reference to what happened in Rome from 538 to 1798. And notice how Martin Luther, who was walking by faith, did not have a pistol, put his whole life in God's hands. So he used a quotation that exposed his hypocrisy. Notice here. But friends, what we saw happen in Haiti, I want to share with you what happened between 538 AD and 1798. The papacy, the Jesuits, launching an outward war against God's true faithful Protestants. It says Rome became more and more exasperated by the attacks of Martin Luther. And it was declared by some of his fanatical opponents, even by doctors in Catholic universities, that he who should kill the rebellious monk would be what, friends? Without sin. One day, a stranger with a pistol, with a what? A pistol hidden under his cloak approached the reformer, Martin Luther, and inquired, why he went thus alone and what was luther's response in that time of crisis i'm in god's hands he's my strength and my shield 
What can man do unto me? Notice, hearing, upon hearing these words, the stranger turned how? Pale. And what? Fled away as from the presence of whom? Angels of heaven. Angels of heaven. Do you know what we need? So he's saying that we need a retinue of angels to surround us. But you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth to say we need angels to protect us, but then to also say we need protection, we need common sense protection. In other words, you're saying you need a gun, which means you're not walking by faith, you're walking in your own works, not what Christ can do for you. We must overcome the defects in our character, and many men think that they need a gun, that they need a firearm to protect their family, to protect themselves, which means they are not walking by faith. They have not died to self. They need to come up spiritually in their walk and come up to the standard in Jesus Christ because Christ did not arm himself with a pistol or with a sword or any weapon of defense in order to defend himself, but he walked in the spirit according to the word of God. That's how Christ walked. And that is how you and I are to walk as we approach the mark of the beast, no matter how dangerous this world becomes. And if God allows me to be laid to rest as a result of a physical attack, then so be it. My life is in God's hands. Watch this fourth clip of Enriquez as he discusses the encounter of Jesus with the scribes and Pharisees that came to take him captive at night with swords. Notice here in this clip. And the latter rain message, Amen. just like when they came to capture Christ. Do you remember when Christ asked them, whom seek, seekest thou? We seek Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. And the minute he said that, what happened to the soldiers? They fell back as Dead men. And then again, he said, you know what? Let these men go. You want me? Let them go. They're not ready yet. And he surrendered, showing they did not take him. He surrendered. Amen. He surrendered. Amen. In the Sunday law time period, we want the latter rain. Amen. We want the company of holy angels to surround us. Amen. But tell them, try it now and see what happens in God's name. To try it now and see what happens in God's name, that's not the spirit of Christ. That is the image of a beast. That is not the image of Christ, brothers and sisters. See, many have no oil in their lamps, meaning we are lacking the character of Christ. And only those who have the spirit of God will have the character to reflect the image of Jesus fully that they may receive the latter rain and be sealed in obedience to the law of God. So now you just saw the clip where he just discussed regarding how he would respond if they were to come in with guns, brothers and sisters. Notice what it says in Matthew 26 and verse 52. Matter of fact, let us start in verse 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. So Peter cut his ear off. Verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, put up again thy sword into his place for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to the Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? In other words, Jesus said, you don't need a sword. Put it up. And he healed the man's ear, showing that we don't need self-defense. You don't need a gun. You don't need a firearm. You don't need a knife. You need Jesus is what you need. Notice another passage in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10, because Enriquez made mention of this regarding 538 to 1798. Notice what Jesus says in light of the patience and the faith of the saints. Jesus says in Revelation 13 and verse 10, He that leadeth into captivity 
shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the what? The patience and the faith of Jesus. In other words, to equip yourself with a gun or a firearm, which means you do not have the faith of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, beware. Enriquez is an apostasy, and those who have eyes to see will separate themselves from him and intercede and pray for him that he may repent before probation closes. Notice our last passage in Revelation 14 and verse 12. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus to equip yourself with a gun or a firearm means you have not the faith of Jesus and you are disobeying the commandments because that gun is your idol. It is your protection. Christ is not your protection. Christ is not your refuge, your strength, your fortress, but that gun is your refuge and strength and protection. Let us put our faith in Jesus because men are an apostasy and this abomination must be exposed. We must sigh and cry for the abominations in the church. We must cry aloud and spare not and lift up our voice like a trumpet and show God's people their sins, the house of Jacob, their transgressions. And because souls are at stake and are being misled into sin by men who are blind, I will not remain silent regardless of what anyone thinks. May God help us to escape the apostasies of these last days. Let us pray. Loving Father, please save your children. Give us the faith to stand in these last days, may we trust in you and not in earthly weapons of warfare. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.